from KSAT 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning, everybody. We're going to jump right in with both feet this morning. A lot going on in our newsroom. It is Tuesday, January 31st. Thanks for joining us. A mess on the roadways, but first, let's go ahead and check with Justin. Hey, good morning to you guys. It is busy indeed. We have a lot of freezing rain that is working its way through northern parts of Bear County into the country. This is starting to ice up some of the bridges and overpasses. Even I'll tell you here in just a second, we're starting to see more issues, even along 1604 on the city's north side, with some of the bridges and overpasses. And those are always the first to go in these situations. But where you see this pink color, that is where we have some light freezing rain and light freezing drizzle. And this radar, particular radar, shows it at about 410 of points north. Uh, and it's, it's light, but even a little bit can cause some issues. And we've had pockets of more moderate freezing rain. And temperatures are plenty cold, especially as you get north of San Antonio. Uh, this is the north side again. Right now you go south of downtown. It is mostly all liquid. In fact, the temperature here in town at the airport just jumped up to 33 degrees. We're razor thin margin here, right on that line. And as you go north into Austin, man, you really run into some issues. Up 35 today, not advisable. You don't want to do it. Austin has had multiple, multiple crashes with lots of ice there. And that is probably the case across parts of the Hill Country. And then as you get up towards Dallas Fort Worth, a lot of issues up there as well. So let me show you the temperatures. 33 degrees here in town at the airport, but 31 Hill Otis, 32 Port SA, 29 Boulevard, 32 Randolph, 32 in the Bronx. So the freezing line somewhere in there. And you get north, those temperatures really drop off. 20 in Comfort, 29 in Kerrville. So some real problems there as that precipitation continues to come down. There are going to be major impacts there across the Hill Country. Not only today, but as we get into tonight and early tomorrow morning, we're going to see more precipitation, some heavier precipitation. And the ice could accumulate up to three quarters of an inch. So Harper, Kerrville, Fredericksburg, Johnson City, Blanco, Candelia, those are all areas where we could have major impacts. Dangerous travel. Not only that, tree limbs could start to come down, and this could take down some power lines. ERCOT is not going to have any issues with it. We have enough power, but if there's going to be power outages, it's going to be because of the ice. And as we look at uh, the moderate impact areas, and I think this is more on the line of Canyon Lake Boulevard, Fair Oaks Ranch, over to Bandera. This is where we can see some isolated power outages, but mostly just issues on the elevated surfaces, uh, maybe some surface roads. And then as you go, some minor impacts here across northern Bear County, minimal icing, bridges and, uh, and overpasses become icy, but we've already seen that. There's more potential for that as we get into tomorrow with that heavier precipitation. So the forecast for today, 33 at 11 o'clock, 33 noontime, 33 at 1 o'clock. We're going to hover right around that number. Maybe, maybe get up to 35 or so, but we've got decent chances of cold rain most of the day with some of that freezing rain in the half of the city with some gusty winds still. And then tonight, with a heavier precipitation starting to move in, by say 9, 10 o'clock, we're going to have to really watch the temperatures closely. And uh, we'll be keeping a very, very close eye on it for sure. Meteorologist Sarah Spivey has been keeping a close eye on conditions up in Bernie. We want to toss it up to her now and see what's going on there. Looks like uh, looks like we may have an issue there on a bridge, Sarah. That's exactly right, Justin. Yes, what we're looking at here is the frontage road of I-10 westbound between 87 and Christus Parkway, so just south of Bernie City, and. What we know so far about this crash was we saw at least about four vehicles on tow trucks. This is created by ice. You'll notice that that frontage road is a bridge. It is elevated. What we also have come to know is that an officer from the Bernie Police Department, the patrol vehicle, was hit. Um, and that officer was transported to the ER. We don't exactly know what his condition is yet, but we do know that the chief of police is going to be talking to us soon. We also know that um, they put some salt on that bridge after uh, the crash happened. And earlier today, photojournalist Billy Caldera and myself uh, were able to see TxDOT working on several of the bridges around this area. So this just, again, the further north you go, you need to be very careful on those bridges and overpasses. So we're looking forward to hearing from the chief of police and let you know. Behind me here, I don't know, if Bill, you can show the trees. Um, every white tip of the tree you see there is a lot of ice on a tree. Uh, what do you see in front of them? Some power lines. So this is one of the things that we're concerned about in this
the hill country as we start to see more freezing rain tonight, tomorrow. Those power lines, the trees causing power outages. Of course, we'll continue to keep an up, you updated on things. As for uh, the, the precipitation right now in Bernie, we are seeing some mist and some drizzle out there. Yeah, and so even though the radar can only really pick up heavier rain, we are currently seeing mist and drizzle around Sienna, around uh, pardon me, Bernie right now. Reporting live from Bernie, I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. Stephen, I'm sure you can tell us more about the conditions of the roads. Thank you, Sarah, and you know, be safe out there. Uh, before we get to this incident behind me, I do want to mention that the city of Kerrville has also released some information regarding a big crash involving multiple 18-wheelers. We know that this is around the I-10 westbound lanes that's being impacted. Traffic pretty much at a standstill between the Kerr and Kimball County line. Uh, now, unfortunately, it's in one of those spots that I'm not able to get any shots ran guide, but I am looking at uh, the situation out there from the Kerrville Police Department, so we'll be bringing you those updates as they become available. But remember, I-10, the further north you go, as Sarah mentioned, it's going to be a little bit tra treacherous. Now, let's get to this issue here along 281. I did receive an update from our friends over at Transguide. This does look like a crash involving multiple vehicles, and you can see it right there. It's in that very uh, dangerous spot, those flyover ramps, uh, 281 northbound at Luke 1604. I'll get that on our map in just a second. Now, uh, not a great shot. We can't zoom in and get a really good look at what's going on out there, but you can see we have vehicles pretty much scattered around the area. Area. So, not sure how many are involved, but you can see that it's definitely more than one. Haven't spotted any first responders out there just yet, but it's remember, it's those flyover ramps that were real searched out. So, I haven't seen any closures according to TechSot just yet, but I do want to advise to make you drive carefully if you can. Maybe best just to stay at home. Let's get to that crash where Sarah Spivey was at. Now, she mentioned it was along I 10 westbound, that frontage road, which is also still a pretty much an elevated surface between you. 87 and Chris's Parkway. We are seeing a little bit of a buildup out there, so just drive carefully. Avoid those areas if you can. But not the only uh, issue that we are tracking this morning. Let's get a jump over here to the northeast side where we have another crash where Sarah Coastal will give us updates in just a moment. Loop 1604 at Lookout Road. A pretty serious crash also involving multiple vehicles. And really, that has been the trend that we've been seeing on the roadway. A few crashes involving several vehicles. Uh, unfortunately, the trend does continue over here along I 10 Westbound at State Highway 46 in Seguin. Uh, unfortunately, another area where we can't really show you the conditions out there because there are no transguide cameras. But the difference here in town, it's been pretty much quiet. We haven't seen congestion. We haven't really even seen a whole lot of issues, at least in, in town just yet. But remember, it's going to be those elevated services where we're going to be certain about. With regards to stalled vehicles or any car trouble, I do want to remind you, if you're still at home and maybe you experience trouble out in the roadways, on the highways especially, the TxDOT Hero program is a great service. They change flat tires, perform minor vehicle repairs, remove minor crashes from the roadway, and assist first responders at crash scenes. We've seen them out several times this morning. Their number, 210-732-HERO. That information is also on our website. But let's get back to some of the situations that we're tracking. 281, again, that's a crash involving multiple vehicles in the northbound lanes at that flyover ramp, but 1604 at Pat Booker on the northeast side looks quiet, but Sierra Costa has been tracking this serious crash involving multiple vehicles on the northeast side. Sarah, what's the conditions, are, what are they looking like right now? Good morning, Stephen. Yeah, you're talking about those elevated surfaces having ice, and that's what we're seeing. We're at Loop 1604 and Lookout Road. This is going on for over an hour. Just take a look behind me. Now, this is right past Oak small right before you get to 35 and loop 1604. So here's what we're seeing. All those flashing lights, a massive car pile up on the westbound access road of loop 1604 over Lookout Road. With our long lens, our photojournalist Robert Samron can see at least four cars involved, but all morning long on scanner chatter, we have heard that police say it involves up to 10 cars. We can't see those because that's on the other side of this ramp. Again, none of this information is officially confirmed by police. These are all reports on scanner that we've been listening to that this is a pile up that was caused by ice on the Tops Bridge. At one point, they closed the eastbound access road lane that you can see are open now because of ice. Now, they brought those salt trucks out to put Brian on that side on the eastbound lanes of 1604 were open. And just as you were tossing to me, Stephen, we saw three to four more brine trucks going up the eastbound lanes to turn around here, most likely to put that brine on the westbound lanes of Loop 1604. Now, police still have this area closed. They did call out EMS to treat some drivers. 
We did see an ambulance arrive about maybe 30 minutes ago. We have not seen it leave since. Again, uh, we also heard that they called out two wreckers to help clear out this mess. They said they have a lot of cars. Uh, they've been able to clear out some cars by the QT. This is all what we're hearing on scanner. Again, not confirmed by police. But if you are in this area, we've been seeing a lot of ice on the elevated surfaces on the city northeast side. So like Stephen and everyone's been saying, if you don't have to travel this morning, stay put and stay safe. Back to you guys. Thank you, Sarah. Well, San Antonio firefighters believe the cold weather could be the reason things got especially warm inside a northwest side apartment. It went up in flames and they suspected it because someone was trying to keep warm. Katrina Weber is live near Forte and Evers Road. And Katrina, we understand this is a familiar scenario for San Antonio fire crews. Well, that's right. They tell us every time it gets really cold like this, they have these fires that break out in what should be vacant buildings and apartments. Uh, they believe caused by people who are trying to set fires to keep warm. They believe that is what happened this morning. In fact, this crew says this is the third fire that they've been to like this just on their shift alone. Now, this fire started. Uh, they believe in a second floor apartment. As you look at this building, you can see a lot of boards on the windows. That's because there was a fire here just within the last couple of months. We were actually out here for that fire, which also was started, they believed, by someone who got inside this building, set a fire, perhaps trying to keep warm. Uh, it looks like it caused some pretty heavy damage here. No one was living in this part of the building, according to firefighters, but just right next to it, some of those have been are occupied and they say police were first on scene. They were going around to those apartments, knocking on the doors, trying to get people out of harm's way. As far as we know, there are no injuries uh, reported from anyone in that the building. And again, this part where the fire was was already vacant. So uh, firefighters now are just wrapping things up and making sure that the fire stays out uh, and also wrapping up their hoses about to leave. But uh, like they're saying, this is caused, they believe, by someone who got inside that vacant building and set a fire, perhaps trying to keep warm. Reporting live on the northwest side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, busy news morning here at KSAT right now, 9 and 32 degrees. And by this time, most parents and staff know which schools are closed today and which are still open. But if you want to check your specific school, you can scan that QR code on your screen. It will take you to our website where we are continuing to update the school closures list as we get notifications from the districts so this will be updated throughout the day and into tomorrow as we keep an eye on the weather welcome back it's 9 14 looking at there with live cam uh, that picture says a thousand words you can see the raindrops on the screen uh free, you know freezing rain and just super cold out there justin yes our concern now uh, obviously you guys have been kind of talking about this on all morning long. We're concerned about what's going to happen later today, tonight, and yes. into tomorrow morning. It gets heavier, and there's some scenario kind of playing on all this, right? And we know when we get these kind of winter systems here in San Antonio, it is such a raised margin between what roads become iced over and what roads don't. You know, 1604 is usually the first to go. Mm -hmm. You know, we're having some problems on 1604. So these are all things we're watching very closely. And yes, more precipitation expected tonight, and the heavier the precipitation, the more ice accumulation we can see in the hill country. Well, let's first start with the radar and get you updated on what's going on right now. Now, yes, there is some light freezing rain. We can see that on the radar. That's all the pink color there. But Sarah made an excellent point earlier. A meteorologist Sarah Spivey and Bernie that just because it's not on the radar doesn't mean there's not light mist and drizzle too. So even if you're not seeing actual returns here, still probably light uh, drizzle and mist just about anywhere you go. The question I think really becomes is what is the temperature where you are. We know at the airport the temperature is right at 33, so we're just a degree above freezing there, all liquid. But if you go north, this pink color is Hollywood Park up along 1604 where we've had numerous issues. Uh, Sarah Costa was just reporting from right there where they have ice on some of the bridges and overpasses. So starting to see that here, and we know in the hill country it's a big along I-10 as you go north. There are slippery roads, multiple crashes being reported same thing along I-35 as you go north. And we can actually look at road conditions here. Now, this is not a perfect map. It's not going to be just uh, perfectly accurate here, but it gives you a good idea of where we are seeing some issues. You get up here into Kamau County, and there is probably some icy roadways, even as far south as northern Bear County. We're getting 
patchy ice. Then it will lift liquid as you go further south there along 410 south of 1604. We can also look at the road temperatures. And uh, again, this is kind of the big deal here, the, depending on what the temperature of the roadway is, is whether or not, uh, you know, depends on whether or not we're going to see ice. So where you see this blue color, those temperatures are now below free. That includes 281 going into the hill country. And now we're going to see temperatures perhaps below freezing on some of these roadways as far south as 1604, which is why we're starting to see some of those bridges and overpasses go. And you may ask, well, uh, why bridges and overpasses? And the reason for that is because air goes underneath these bridges and overpasses and also up above. So once the air temperature drops below freezing, these bridges are exposed to the cold air above and below. And that is why they're always the first to ice over and why we just want to avoid them, especially those tall ramps on the north side, you know, 1604, 281. Just avoid it. Uh, all those ramps really along 1604, probably you, know, you just don't want to use them right now. Uh, so that's the uh, situation there. I want to show you the impacts. And we think there will be major impacts with this ice again coming tonight across the hill country. Fredericksburg, uh, Hunt, Kerrville, Comfort, over to Blanco. This is where we can see ice accumulations up to three quarters of an inch. Dangerous travel, some power issues uh, because of power lines, tree limbs coming down. Uh, moderate impacts in places like Bandera, Fair Oaks Ranch, Canyon Lake, where we could have some minor power outages, but certainly some icy, icy elevated surfaces and uh, some of the surface roads, even, uh, surface roads, I should say. And then minor impacts here across the northern part of Bear County, but we're already seeing that along 1604 with uh, icing on some of the bridges and overpasses. There's the scene outside, all liquid at the airport right now, 33, 34, it's in 33 at Kelly, but down to 32 over at Randolph on the northeast side. Uh, and as we look at the numbers, 32 New Braunfels, 29 Kerrville. So you can kind of pick out where that freezing line is. Hello, it is 31 and uh, 32 Canyon Lake. So it's right through here where uh, we're having those issues. And you get up to Cur uh, Comfort and Kerrville, temperatures in the upper 20s there. Wind chills in the low 20s in some cases. So it's just, it's, it's cold. Great day really to stay inside. And you see we still have that overrunning pattern here. So this is widespread. Dallas to San Antonio, down to Austin out to West Texas, we've got issues. Here's our forecast. Midday today, maybe a little bit of a break this afternoon, but watch what happens tonight. We'll fast forward to 10 o'clock, starting to see more freezing rain develop, and then it begins to pick up around midnight. And by tomorrow morning, widespread freezing rain, probably lit for most of San Antonio, but the northern half of the city will have to watch for freezing rain and some of that accumulation. This goes well into tomorrow morning, maybe tapering off a little bit tomorrow afternoon and then hopefully going away by Thursday morning, but not before we see some and some pretty significant accumulations in the hill country. 70% chance of rain today. Temperatures hold pretty steady, 34, 35 maybe this afternoon, but they come back down those temperatures a little bit tonight. And as we look at the extent forecast, 35 Wednesday, 47 Thursday, we start to see some of that clearing. 59 Friday gets much better by the weekend. But stay tuned. We're going to have much more on all of this today. And we'll also be updating our app quite frequently uh, with the latest updates that we can get to you. And uh, we'll let you know how this all unfolds. All right. We'll be checking in with you, especially in the evening to the overnight hours. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you so much, Justin. We've been very focused on the roads. Icy winter weather is uh, causing some flight cancellations across the Lone Star State as well. All right, Tiffany Huertas joins us live from San Antonio International Airport with the latest. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Mark and Steph. Earlier today, we reported some of those cancellations, and we're still seeing those right now. Take a look. Southwest cancellations include Dallas, Las Vegas, Tucson, Washington, and a flight to Denver from Frontier as well. But check it out. Passengers are still coming here and checking in to their flights that have not been canceled yet. I spoke to one that they're hoping their trip to Las Vegas does not get canceled, but on social media, Southwest shares due to weather conditions, service in some cities may be disrupted. They ask passengers to check their status and options online. And of course, we're going to have all those details on KSAT.com. And patience is key if traveling today. Back to you. Tiffany, thank you. Live at San Antonio International Airport, 920, 32 degrees. And we'll be right back with a look at your morning headlines and our continued weather coverage. Hey, the morning headlines of Virginia School, where the two-year-old shot his teacher, is increasing the security. A Dallas Zoo has lost some more animals. A rock solid say about 
a big boulder and a house. David Sears is here to explain all of these stories. Morning, Dave. Morning. We are going to show you what the rock was cooking. <laughs> okay. Let's get, get to that in just a second. But first, Virginia school that was the scene of shooting a couple of weeks ago, stepping up its safety protocols. A six-year-old brought a gun to school and ended up shooting in the chest. She's recovering from the gunshot. The school trying to recover from those changes. For one, students will have to go through metal detectors now. They will now have to bear school stuff in see-through backpacks. And there will also be bigger police presence with all these new policies are put into place. While the investigation in the school shooting continues, parents still a little leery about sending their kids back to school, even with these new protocols. Very nervous and anxious about her coming back. You don't know exactly what happened, because you never know if this is going to happen again. Hopefully, going forward, it'll, it'll be a lot better. I think more people should lose their jobs. This is a step forward. I hope it continues with what the city of Newport News is doing, the officers here. But it's a lot. It's a lot, these babies. These are babies. And and they don't deserve this. As the kids return to class, teachers say they need more help with emotional and social support for those students. The search is across Dallas for the culprit who keeps monkeying around at the Dallas Zoo, letting animals out of their habitats. There was another break in or breakout yesterday morning. The zoo revealed that the enclosure for the Emperor Tamarin was slashed, two of the monkeys gone. The police tell us it was an intentional cut and the animals were targeted is the fourth time something suspicious has happened at the zoo. And we're also really disturbed by the idea that someone might have intentionally done this. Oh, was it someone? You notice they didn't tell us it was really a person or an animal. You never know. One of their buddies might be cutting some of their friends loose and letting them have a little taste of freedom. Who's to say it's not Mr. Bear or Mr. Hippo with a big knife, huh? Dallas Zoo stepping up security, limiting the time and closures are open to the public. On a serious note, 10,000 reward is being offered in on the culprits. Of course, that could buy a lot of feed. And did you see that right there? Did, did you see that? Again, here it comes. Look at this in slow motion. Right through the front of the house, right by that lady. You know what that is? That, my friends, is a big, huge boulder. It came crashing right through the house. There it is, right there. Huge boulder. It happened in Honolulu on sunny night. It nearly took out that poor woman. The boulder went right through the outer wall. That outer wall made a cinder block. It went through the living room and then ended up in the bedroom. The rock, about five feet tall, five feet wide. Not sure why the boulder went through the house, however. There had been some heavy rains a few days, but still no rock-solid reason. The investigation continues to roll on. I like that. Good job, David. She's going to have to replace that whole sofa I, set. I, yeah, I, I'm sure the sofa. A contractor has been called. Oh, my gosh. She got so lucky, though. I mean, it was close. She was right there. Four or five feet, right? Yeah, she was right there. That's crazy. All right, David, thank you. But right now, 27, 33 degrees. And we'll be wrapped right with a check on weather and traffic. All right, if you're just joining us, 9.30 here in South Texas. It's not that icy last day of January for many folks especially San Antonio and more. And I think Justin would agree it's probably going to get worse before things get better around here. Yeah, that was an icicle I saw there on the live cam. Uh, yeah, keep in mind those are elevated. Uh, so there's uh, a little bit of ice on that camera. Now, we've been talking about all morning long. I, I just give you a bottom line forecast here. I would avoid 1604 on the north side, at least the ramps for sure. Bridges and overpasses at this point. Try to take the service roads, surface roads, and... I think south of that, you're probably okay. It's still mostly liquid here in town. But hey, if you can just stay home today, maybe work was canceled. A lot of schools were canceled and just stay home. Uh, I think a lot of the issues, though, are going to reside here on the uh, north side of San Antonio. And that's where we continue to see some of this pink color. This is all light, green drizzle, light freezing rain. But even a little bit can cause huge issues. And we've already seen some crashes there on the uh, north side along 1604. And then as you go north and do the hill country, things just get worse. I-35, New Braunfels up to San Marcos, Kyle. Austin's an uh, absolute mess. Uh, you can see there's another patch of freezing rain starting to move in. And while you don't see a lot of coverage across the hill country, there is mist and drizzle, and it's freezing on contact. And Sarah will show you that here in just a second from Bernie, where they've gotten plenty of ice, and they're starting to see it in the trees. Uh, great illustration of that. Uh, here around San Antonio, further south, it is mostly just liquid. Yes, uh, 33 at the airport, a little bit warmer than that at Stinson. So the roads are probably, you know, just wet roads can 
cause some slick spots. So we just got to be careful out there. Uh, I want to take you to the temperatures, which are going to be just crucial here in this whole event. We're at 33 degrees at the airport, 32 New Braunfels, 29 Boulevard, 31 Hulotus, 30 Bernie Stage, 28 Comfort. You can see kind of where the pockets of freezing temperatures are. And it will be a razor thin margin here across the north side of San Antonio as to whether or not we see some larger impacts. But at the moment, we think uh, we see the slight pink color. That's where we're just going to expect some minor impacts. Bridge overpasses there along 1604 north side. Flyovers, avoid them. You go further north, Bernie, Farrell Ranch, Canyon Lake. This is where we start to see moderate impacts, where we do some thicker ice accumulations, some tree limbs. Uh, some travel issues, and then you run into some real travel issues as you get up towards Fredericksburg, Junction, Kerrville, going up I-10. Reports of crashes there. Along I-10, as Stephen will tell you in a little bit. And then you look at Texas as a whole, this is a massive area of freezing, rain, sleet, even some snow on the whole backside of this thing. And so this is going to cause a travel nightmare for much of the state of Texas. And no, we are not expecting any snow or anything like that. Uh, if that was your question, it, just some freezing rain uh, is what we are looking for here. The air is uh, fairly shallow. 70% chance of that cold rain here in San Antonio, 33 noontime. And they hang out right around 32, 33, 34 throughout the rest of the afternoon. But it will be damp. And we'll get those good northeasterly winds, which will be values. Next question is, how cold does it get tonight? Because we are expecting more heavy precipitation. We will jump into that forecast here in just a few minutes. But as I said, we want to get up to meteorologist Sarah Spivey there in Bernie. You showed us a great illustration earlier of those trees starting to collect ice. What do you see now, Sarah? Yeah, Justin, I want to, first we're seeing some mist and some drizzle. So it's still raining here. This is all freezing, missing drizzle. Streets are fine. The regular roads are fine. It's those elevated bridges. By the way, I want to give you an update on the crash that happened there on I-10 West Frontage Road involving an officer and his and their patrol vehicle. The chief of police went to the hospital and that officer is in stable condition. So that is some good news there. That's according uh, to the Bernie Police Department's Facebook page. What I want to show you right now is the power of wind-driven freezing rain. Behind me, what you see is half an inch of ice on this bush, okay? Half an inch on one side, pushing this that way, and then on the other side, there's not all that much uh, freezing rain. So this is very uh, heavy on this side, and this is the issue that we see with trees, too. You can actually see on this tree above me, it actually sounds like it's crackling because the ice is hitting itself. There's at least half an inch of ice on one side of this tree. That tree is going to start to sag, and you can imagine that if there were power lines nearby, that would cause some power outages. We have not seen the worst of it here in Bernie yet. We're expecting heavier freezing rain, as Justin has mentioned, tonight and tomorrow around Bernie. So there are going to be power outages. Uh, again, very interesting to see the wind-driven uh, freezing rain here on this reed. Half inch of it has ice on it. The other half is barren. So this is what we're going to be looking for in the coming hours, the coming day and a half, keeping you updated for the Hill Country, which of course is going to be the area most infect, uh, affected by this uh, freezing rain. So reporting live from Bernie, I'm meteorologist Sarah Spivey. Let's get a check on the roads with Stephen Cavastos. Hey, thanks for all the updates, Sarah. Um, you know, you mentioned some of that ice that we saw building up on the trees. Uh, Mark and I noticed that these transguide cameras were actually kind of scoping the area. Let's get a wider look. Uh, this is our camera that's probably the furthest that we're able to get right now. It's 10 there at Kerrville East, and you can see those trees, as Sarah mentioned, is starting to collect a few of those uh, the, that ice. And really, starting to see some of that also on the roadways, on the grass there. So obviously, the roads are getting a little bit trickier to navigate. We know a little bit further up I-10 westbound between Kimball County and Kerr County line that there's a pretty serious crash involving multiple 18-wheelers, which is causing massive delays for drivers. We're working at pinpointed location. I doubt that we're going to be able to get the conditions or the shot of the conditions out there. But nonetheless, drive safe. The further north you go, the trickier it can get, guys. Let's get you to the map because we do have a few issues to update you on. You remember this particular along that flyover ramp, 281 northbound at Loop 1604? Well, it's still there. I was talking to our friends at Transguide, and they're saying that it doesn't look like it's closed off just yet. The roads are slick in that particular spot. 
downtown. But again, no reports of closures at this flyover ramp, so just make sure you watch out for crews. We do have multiple vehicles that are kind of scattered along that uh, ramp there, so just watch out. Uh, still keeping a close eye on this crash here along Loop 604. Westbound, a pretty serious crash where we know multiple vehicles were involved. And uh, we're going to talk to Sarah Acosta to find out what the conditions look like there. But overall, it's been a pretty tricky morning. Here in town, things have been quiet. It's a little bit more further north you go where we're going to encounter those problems. I've been updating our traffic page, our Twitter page. So if you are at home, scan this QR code. That's going to take you directly to our traffic page. We not only have a full list of closures, but a full list of traffic related stories. And also the tweets that I send out are in embedded in this page. Just make sure to scroll to the bottom. You'll find the full list of all the updates on the roads. But for now, let's head over to Sarah Ocosa, who is live on the northeast side with an update on that serious crash involving multiple vehicles. Sarah. Good morning, Stephen. Here's the good news. For the most part, show wreckers have showed up and been able to clear up the majority of that car pile up here on the westbound access road of Loop 1604. And look, and look out. So where we give you a perspective, we are in the QT parking lot now on the other side of this crash. Earlier we were on the bound side, now we're on the other side. And you can see that those two hero trucks have that ramp onto the access road of westbound loop 1604 closed. But we just heard over the scanner that they're going to be opening it pretty soon. I think that's what they're doing. They're about to pick up those cones. They had to get the trucks out here to just really put a lot of brine on the elevated surface of the access route of Loop 1604. What we had earlier from our long lens, we saw four cars involved, but police over scanner said it involved up to 10 cars. Again, that information not officially confirmed by police. I just went up to a police cruiser that's parked right next to us to get confirmed. He could not confirm it with me. He needed to talk to a supervisor first. But all these are reports, again, on scanner. So it, at one point, they even closed the eastbound Loop 1604 lanes over Lookout uh, because of ice. But they've been putting those salt, those salt trucks out here and just putting a lot of heavy brine. We were able to drive over the eastbound lanes, and we were safe. We did see a lot of that salt and brine helping melting this ice on the elevated surface. Again, this, accident, this crash is clearing and about to open up the roads again but if you are in the area we have been seeing a lot of ice a lot of crashes on the northeast side of bear county on elevated roads especially like right here on loop 1604 so please be safe out there live from the northeast side i'm sarah costa ksat 12 news back to you guys all right thank you sarah again that's right in that area that we're really going to be watching closely for the next 24 to 36 hours. Keep it here on KSAP for updates. Right now, 940, 32 degrees. You're watching GMSA at 9, and we'll be right back. 943 back. Yes, uh, we've had a busy morning, but it's mm -hmm. going to continue. It is, and in fact, we have uh, some indications that things may get a little bit worse tonight in this that we're going to see some heavier precipitation. What is going to be so vitally important is where that freezing line sets up. Uh, and I think it will come just south of northern Bear County. So this is where we're going to have some issues. And yeah, the rainfall is good, but we don't want the freezing stuff. So let's first start with a picture uh, coming out of the uh, Stone Oak Timberwood Park area. Skywatcher is one of our great submitters of photos here on KSAC Connect, showing us that uh, this was his car around five. And uh, keep in mind, if your car is parked outside and you're in northern Bear County or in the hill country, yeah, you're going to have a ton of ice on your windshield. So uh, just a heads up there. Uh, by the way, submit your photos to KSAC Connect. If you can take some safely of what you're seeing where you are, we'd love to see them. We can always share them and uh, we can get a good idea of, of what's going on here across our viewing area. So let's switch over to radar now. And we'll look at what's going on as far as the uh, freezing rain is concerned. Still seeing it, it's still light. But even in between these returns, we're still seeing the mist and drizzle. Sarah showed you that there and burning. So it still can add up. And even just the littlest bit of precipitation, if it's freezing, you'll start to see it accumulate, especially on signs, metal things, uh, 
elevated roadways, as we know. The bridges and overpasses start to become a little bit slick, and then the trees, of course. And as the ice begins to weigh on the trees, we get heavier precipitation tonight in the hill country. That's when you start to be concerned of branches breaking off and perhaps taking down some power lines. So let's zoom in a little bit closer where we're seeing these patches of freezing drizzle, freezing rain. And right now, it's over near Holotus, Leon Springs, Scenic Oaks. Start to see, uh, we're starting to see a little bit of of uh, light rain move or light freezing rain move through your neck of the woods. We've seen that along I-35, shirts uh, up to green, New Braunfels, and then mostly it's liquid as you get further south. We're starting to see more green than we are pink here across the city of San Antonio, and that's encouraging. Temperatures are right at about 33 at the airports. That helps. It helps. Uh, you go out to Northern Bear County, still probably right around 32 or so. And if you're on the south side of town, You've mostly just had rain. It hasn't, uh, haven't seen a lot of issues, and I think it probably stays that way. As we look at the freezing rain impacts, uh, it is going to be a major issue for the Hill Country, and I know we've shown this graphic a lot, but I think it's worth repeating. Uh, dangerous travel here in the Hill Country. Anywhere from Kerrville to Comfort, over to Blanco, Candelia, Wimberley, problematic. Power lines could start to come down. Ice accumulations up to three quarters of an inch. Moderate impacts in places like Canyon Lake, Boulevardy, Fair Oaks Ranch, Bandera, a little further south, maybe even extreme northern Bear County. This is where we are going to see icy elevated surfaces, even some of the surface roads. And then as you go further south, it's mainly just bridges and overpasses here on the north side of San Antonio along 1604. But we've already seen that. And as we get more again, precipitation tonight, there could be additional issues tomorrow. Uh, there's a look at the airport. And yes, that is a little bit of ice sitting on our camera right there. And keep in mind, this camera is elevated, but some ice showing up there. And temperatures right now, 33. Dew point is at 29, but northerly winds at 13. 32 in New Braunfels, 29 Kerrville, 27 in Fredericksburg, 31 Holotus, 32 in New Braunfels, still looking at 32 over there at Randolph. And uh, wind chill values are in the 20s. Uh, 20 is what it feels like right now. It's a game. And by the way, they've had a few issues with ice there as well. 26 Rio Medina, 29 is what it feels like right now. And Bandera, another place reporting some light icing going on. Let me show you the big picture. Because this stretches from west of Del Rio, across West Texas, San Angelo, Dallas, down to Austin, Waco, and San Antonio. It's that corridor right there where travel is really at its worst. And we've got that overrunning situation. Dallas is uh, just seeing a mess up there. They've got freezing rain with sleet on top of that, and the roads are just absolute skating rinks. We're still waiting on this area of low pressure out over California to move in, and that is going to give us that additional lift tonight with the better chances of rain. So let me walk you through the forecast here very quickly. Noon time today, maybe a little bit of a break as we get into the afternoon, but still cloudy, still drizzly. And then by tonight, we're starting to see things pick up again. And notice the intensity begins to pick up around midnight. And by tomorrow morning, a lot going on. We can see freezing rain, some of it heavy. Northern Bear County across the hill country. And this is where we could see some of our bigger ice accumulations. That continues right on into 8 a.m., even midday, before we start to see things calm down a little bit. But even around 4 o'clock, still showing some of that freezing rain with liquid uh, likely precipitation here in San Antonio, and we could see some pretty decent rain accumulations here in town. So temperatures holding steady today, 33, 34. So good chances of rain, light drizzle, mist, cold, windy, all of it. it feels very much like winter out there in the extended forecast. 35 tomorrow, still with that heavier rain working through. It's not until Thursday morning we finally get done with the rain and then maybe some clearing Thursday afternoon and temperatures get much more tolerable as we head towards the weekend, 64 Saturday, 70 on Sunday with the sun out. But we've got to get through the next couple of days and we'll be here all day long. We'll be updating you on the weather app as often as we possibly can to let you know what's going on. Yeah, this is changing minute by minute. We just already got word that San Marcos CISD is going to have campus closed tomorrow. So we're already starting to get some word on some of those. We'll be updating the list bottom of your screen and also on our website at ksat.com. Yes, we will. Thank you, Justin. Time now 949 and 33 degrees for now. And again, most people know which schools are closed today and which are still open, but we are still getting some updates from the school districts. If you want to check your specific school, you can scan that QR code on your screen. It will take you to our website where we are continuing to update the list of closures and we'll be right back. As you might imagine, or if you haven't seen our prior reports, the icy weather is affecting some flights, some, but not all. Tiffany Huertas gives us an update from San Antonio International Airport. 
Earlier today, we saw some cancellations here at San Antonio International Airport. And at the 9 a.m. hour, we're still seeing a few delays and cancellations. Take a look. Right now, Southwest cancellations include to Dallas, Las Vegas, Tucson, Washington, and a flight to Denver from Frontier. But check it out. Passengers are still checking in this morning. They're hoping their flights don't get canceled on social media. Southwest shares due to weather conditions. Service in some cities may be disrupted. They ask passengers to check their status and options online. And again, patience is key if you're traveling today. Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Tiffany, thank you. It, temperatures right now hovering around 33 degrees. We've still got some of that light rain here in San Antonio, light freezing rain across the northern side of the city into the hill country. This continues all day long. We're going to see it pick up even more so tonight. So things actually get a little bit heavier. We could pick up some pockets of heavy rain, but that also means pockets of heavy freezing rain north of uh, Loop 1604. And as you get into the hill country, some serious ice accumulations that means some travel issues. Uh, especially tonight into tomorrow morning and we'll be watching temperatures very closely here in San Antonio. Uh, right now we're forecasting high maybe around 34, maybe dropping a couple of degrees tonight. That uh, temperature again will be very, very important. Tomorrow 35, heavier rain, 80% chance, 35 Thursday morning, but 47 by Thursday. And finally we get some clearing Friday into the weekend, which will be nice. Uh, just know that you'll want to avoid 1604 on the north side there, at least the flyovers. I'd say uh, now and probably even into tonight and tomorrow as uh, the situ situation may get a little bit worse. Uh, we'll continue to update you also on the KSAT weather app. Just a heads up there if you don't have the app. It's a great tool. Yes. And we're going to pass it over to Stephen now. What are you seeing on the roadways? Any updates? Well, things uh, have pretty much stayed the same, Justin, here in town. But uh, there at 35 at Loop 1604, we did have that pretty big pileup at Sierra Costa was live at throughout the 9 and in the early hours of the morning. But it does look like it's already clearing out uh, here in town. It's not really been bad, but we are seeing those issues, as you mentioned, along those elevated surfaces. For instance, 281, uh, those northbound lanes at 1604, that uh, particular flyover ramp, we have a pretty serious crash there involving a few vehicles. Um, that particular shot at Transguide, it, we're keeping a close eye on those flyover ramps. No closures reported just yet. But again, as you mentioned, north of 1604, you want to make sure you drive safe. If not, avoid the area if you can. Um, we're seeing a lot of incidents out toward Austin and as you mentioned, uh, the Dallas area as well. Mm -hmm. Thankfully here in town, it's not got it's not been too bad, but obviously we're going to watch the roads closely throughout the morning and uh, later today. And yeah. if you've got to go to places like Junction or El Paso later today, keep that in mind as well. We've I've got I-10 closed That's out right. past Kerrville as well. Yes. And Guys, thanks for all your hard yeah. work. Yes, thank you, and then you'll continue to work hard, I know, throughout the night and early tomorrow morning right. as well. More we'll updates at noon? We'll be here. I'll be here. <laughs> All right. See you guys.